This is Mark and Charity's Coffee Podcast. It's Mark and Charity Coffee Podcast for Wednesday, May the 11th. Had a bit of a sneeze and a scratchy throat, so I did a rapid antigen test. Came up negative for COVID, but positive for Mick Happy today. <laughs> Make happy. That's a long way to go for that opening. Say, so, I've all gone, right, I was just going to open with Happy McHappy Day. I've gone farther, <laughs> but that's that's pretty long. I know you have, but happy yes, McHappy today Day, is McHappy Day. It is back, as we mentioned yesterday. New this year? Is it new? I'm trying. I'm wondering if they didn't do it last year too to help raise money through the pandemic. But you can order anything off the menu today, mm-hmm. as opposed to. Individual items exactly covers everything. Just be a buck from every Big Mac. Yeah, a coffee sandwich I think. in the morning, hot beverages. Yeah, and now, and now it's everything. Everything, just a percentage of all sales yep. today, which is amazing. So if you want a McChicken, go get it. Ice cream this afternoon. Two pies for whatever. I never did ask Bob no, how they get the ask about the apple pies. How do you get the filling so in the pie? So good. That is something you know what I think has gotten lost on their menu. The apple Those pie, apple no, pies, I never. They keep, but they keep coming out with new things, right? right. So yeah. you, you try the new things or you, you find oh. other foods to try. <laughs> you don't hear so much about the apple pie, which is such a staple and a favorite when you go. I'm glad you brought it up this morning because now I'm thinking about it. <laughs> try new things. I don't try I know. new things. I, I, know. I have I, all the things in thinking? my life that I like. I don't need don't any need more new things. It. Got it. Because okay. it would have to replace something else that I like. Would it have to replace? It couldn't be added to? No. No, it'd have to replace something. Life isn't a some cost, zero, zero some cost thing. Like, you know, if you eat one thing, it means there's something else at that time you're not eating. <laughs> but I like all the things that I eat, and I don't want any of them to go away. I love your rationale sometimes. Yeah, so I just, the way you, you can't you look do it. at things. It's, it's a time capital. <laughs> That's what you look at. I, time capital. So if you spend an hour doing something you don't like, why? Yeah. Because you That's don't get an hour that hour you could back. be spending doing something you do like. Something I get else. it. I heard, get it. I, I listened to a podcast yesterday about the glory of quitting. The glory of quitting and how it just releases so much stress. If you're doing stuff you don't like and you can, stop doing it. Yeah. But why do we keep doing it? Because of all the invested time in it. But I've gotten this far. I've spent so much time on it, so I have to keep going. Why? Just stop. So I've stopped trying new things. That's my thing. Okay. Well, we have it up on our Facebook what page. Yeah. <laughs> what your favorite item is at McDonald's. So please share. We would love. Yeah. I put up there. I always get the quarter pounder with cheese. And of course, they're fries. One well, of the, those are my favorites. Over the years, there was a time like way, way back when McDonald's would slightly vary from restaurant to restaurant. We think, of course, it's so really? uniform. Yeah. yeah. And I think it was a guy in Buffalo, I'm willing to say it like that, with such certainty in my voice, <laughs> who invented the Big Mac. And because he had he... it only at his, and then the chain said, because it minute. sold so well, yeah. we should move this countrywide. He, he did it secretly? I'm not, I, I'm not sure. I, okay. I don't know the answer to that. But I know, like, you know, if you do the hamburgers, everybody does the hamburgers the same way. I saw the movie The Founder, mm-hmm. where some of them wanted lettuce on it, and he went nuts on them and said, no. So this when is people how pull you up, do it. Yeah, it has to be the same at every one. That's what people are going to expect. That's the beauty of it, is it will be uniform. You know Doesn't when you go to McDonald's. Doesn't matter where you are. That's right. You're going to enjoy and in the movie, Big Mac. He was driving through small towns, and he said every town had a library, no, uh, a courthouse, a church, and a McDonald's. That's what he wanted. Well, and that was our th- our high low game this morning too with Galaxy of Games. Our question was how many restaurants are here in Canada? The answer being fourteen fifty. But then there was also how many in the world? Yeah, forty four thousand. Yeah, <laughs> forty four thousand McDonald's around the world, all yeah. making the same sandwiches with a few variants. I get it in different countries. Yeah, different yeah. things would be popular, of course, and they would ch- change things up a little bit. But for the most part. They're uniform across the board. Yeah, I'm a just, you know, Big Mac, go for it kind of guy. See, and the Big Mac has more than a quarter pounder. I'm surprised that you would go for a Big Mac over that. I'm a big fan. What about the fries? Do you enjoy the fries? Because that fries. is a big, even my kids, I didn't even yeah. have to teach them. They just knew McDonald's fries, hands down. Every the best other fries. restaurant does its shot, right? They want They try. It. They, they take try. their shot at McDonald's you know? fries. And it's not that they're bad, yeah. but they're not McDonald's fries. Yeah. I don't know. I, I don't know what. Uh, Bob Doyle and, and Ken and Cynthia do yep. and all the other chains yeah, figured out. And, uh, all the other owners but wow 
it's just amazing. It's a fun day for us uh, to be able to go and hang out for an hour, and it's a fun day for you to go shop. It's a fun day for them there. Well, we caught up with owner Bob Doyle to ask him about that today. How are you guys this Hey, morning? we're great. Thanks <laughs> for picking up the phone, even though you have call display and you knew it was us. <laughs> happy well, McHappy Day. Good, yeah. Happy McHappy Day to you guys. Before we get any farther, congrats with the Chamber of Commerce, man, because there's a straight line yeah. drawn between what you do in McHappy Day for the Children's Foundation and what happened at the chamber dinner? Well, you know, I think there's a lot of people out there that uh, deserve this kind of thing, and I just got uh, the lucky of the uh, the roll of the dice. So yeah, 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 yeah. Well, yeah, congratulations. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, thank you very much. People out there that deserve something like this. So it's nice to be recognized. So. But this is a big day, of course, and we are raising money yep. for the Children's Foundation, and a big day for you because you have uh, multiple stores involved today. So, so what goes yep. into planning for today, Bob? Well, mostly we get uh, a package from McDonald's and then we try to make it uh, our own, as it were. So, you know, like we have the already in the drive throughs at North Front for sure and probably at Bayview. We have uh, people from the foundation uh, in there, uh, you know, just trying to put their good step forward and uh, they're so there and there. So that's one other thing. Plus, we also make it more fun for the crew and that kind of stuff. So, yeah, it's a uh, it's a good thing. So, yeah, where there's all lots going on, for sure. Ron and McDonald's Children's Charities uh, nationally uh, also benefits from it, but locally. Why would you choose the Children's Foundation to get some of the funds, Bob? Well, I think the reason is probably pretty simple. It was one of the first organizations that I joined up with when I came into town, uh, which was 20-some-odd years ago. And uh, I think it's the right thing to do for kids. You know, and adults can take care of themselves, but kids are going to have a kind of a rough time, so... Yeah, we take care of that that way. It was the first one we saw. It must be a really fun day for you. Yeah, it's kind of interesting. We see a lot, you know, like there's people come into the restaurants and they work, which is really cool. Uh, get to, you know, reestablish with them, which is always good because they're local guys. Um, I don't know. They, you know what? And then customers coming through, the customers are seem to be a little bit happier, right? And so if you... If you can get that from them, then that's a good thing, too. Now, I know I'm not allowed to crawl through the drive through window anymore. We put the kibosh <laughs> on that. because okay. There's only one job I haven't done at McDonald's yet, and I'm wondering whether I can do that at the Bayview Mall location today. Absolutely. What is it? I've never been the owner. <laughs> well, okay. <laughs> this, this, this is easy. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Have somebody phone you, and then you'll be there. <laughs> 24 hours a day to look after everything. No, I think I'll look after drive through That sounds a lot easier. <laughs> Bob Doyle. All menu yep. items are going to help out today. Bob, we appreciate it. I know you're busy. Hope we get a chance to I see you later on today. Okay, guys. Appreciate everything you do. Busy guy. Busy guy. So it was good of him to take some good. time this morning because I'm sure a lot. He mentioned what goes into today into today but the day itself i would think from the time he woke up mm -hmm. until the doors closed tonight he would just be running running and talking then, to people helping out with orders because i have seen that oh for sure yeah. he'll he'll step in and and ring someone through and get their food and it's not unusual to see the owners behind the counter at mm -hmm. any given time you know but when they own multiples it's difficult to be yep. I mean, Bob could clone himself and be at all four restaurants. And <laughs> well, you're going to be at the Bayview be, one today. Yeah. so <laughs> and I get to be the owner today. And I suspect I don't want that because it's going to be, how much does that cost? It was cost? so funny. When you were asking that question, I'm thinking, well, what haven't you done? You've been, you told me you were, and I'm listed, like I'm going through in my mind. I'm thinking, I did not expect you to say owner. So. No. Well, that's the joy of working with me now, <laughs> isn't know. it? You never know. Which is crazy because the story know. came out this morning that nearly three out of five of us, which means, you know, most of us are worried about being authentic around others in the workplace. So we have a workplace personality or persona, mm -hmm. and we do not want our real lives to blur that line. 60% of people that. in the office... They, they don't want you to know anything about yeah. them, period. And when I read that, I thought, wow. It, that's a big number. It is. There's no question. Big I'm not number. surprised. For me, it's not a worry. It's just, I know I'm different here yeah. than I am at home. They're yeah. different roles. So yeah. you're around Completely. different people. Yeah. And, and yeah, so, but it is very surprising. And I don't even try to pretend that I know the real you. <laughs> Well, and I joke, I say, you know, there are very few people who know the real me, and sadly, I am not one of them. 
and we play different Kathy's characters. Kathy's probably the only oh, yeah. one who does. I think yeah. so. Yeah. And uh, and we play different characters of ourselves on our own mm-hmm. show. Mm-hmm. It's and just part of the personality of what we do. In, in this industry, I would say. But, for certainly. example, you know I'm married. I know you're married. I know your spouse's name. If I saw him in the street, we could have a con- We know each other. Mm-hmm. There are people that don't even want their coworkers to know if they're married, their sexual orientation, or any of their relationships. No personal status. information. Nothing. Outside of the office. Wow. They don't want people to know if they have kids. They don't want them to know, yes, their marital status, their sexual orientation, um, their religious beliefs. Politics is a big one. Politics is number one. Especially right now, I can yeah. see that. I'm not surprised. 37%. Yes. Number one thing they hide from their employers and fellow employees. Yeah. And 24%, one out of four said they can even hide a disability if it is possible. If it is not a some sort of a, a visible disability, they don't want anybody to know about it, even though clearly you can't be fired mm-hmm. for it. Well, and it's not because they necessarily feel they have to hide it either, because again, three out of four people, so the majority say they do feel, or they do say their current employer encourages not conformity, yeah, but an environment to be an individual. Like, show your individuality. Yeah. Be you. We want you to be you. <laughs> and they're like, like no. <laughs> ha, that's great. Yep, this is me. But no, not so. really. 64% of people have said that they have experienced some sort of backlash from their colleagues when a private detail of their life became public knowledge. So, yeah, we want to know the real you. So then you say something, and they're like, well, you're a jerk. <laughs> Oh, I didn't know you voted that way. Oh, I didn't know you went to that church. Oh, I didn't know that you have six kids. Oh, I Then all of a sudden, because you've mm-hmm. given a little bit of the real you, oh, you get it back in your face. So people, three out of five people will not tell you anything about their real life at home, and they're a totally different person at work. That was a that was a shocking wake up today. For it is one. a wake up. I I do feel that hmm, not that people shouldn't be able to be themselves at work, but there's a line too, yeah. and I wonder if maybe that's the backlash that they feel they had was because maybe too much mm-hmm. crossed over, and then it's kind of like okay, well yeah, now it's affecting your work. So I can kind of see where maybe the line does need to be drawn, but at no point should you not feel that you can't be yourself. Express yourself. Yeah, you know, we're in radio, which is a pretty loosey goosey industry to yeah, begin with. We're all sure. a bunch of nuts and personalities, <laughs> and nosy. And uh, I'm not sure I can name all the spouses of everybody here at the station. I'm not sure that, because there are some people here who are private. They're not, you know, on air. Yeah. They're office staff, and I don't interact with them all the time. And I think that's the way they like it. And, <laughs> <laughs> and and I don't think I know, but I also don't think it's my business to go up to them and say See, and sorry. Th- yeah, and that's the other thing too. It's 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 not it's not my business to know. Mm-hmm. Again, I'm I know Kathy. I've met Kathy, and I'm familiar with your children. You talk about your kids. Yeah. But I I wouldn't say I necessarily ask. Mm-hmm. Sometimes I do. How are they doing? Right. But yeah, I kind of feel like if you want to tell me, sure, I'm not going to pull it out of you. That's you. That's your business. That's yeah. If you want to talk about it, great. If not, that's great too. Because now I'm thinking about how conversations would go if, you know, somebody was, say, in, I'll call it like middle age, like to say they were like 40 and they started a job and they didn't want anybody to know anything about them. And mm-hmm. somebody would say to them, oh, you know, you, you, you got any kids? And they were to just say, no, I don't. And you would go, oh, 40 without kids. Like, see that judgment, that judgment in your head? Mm-hmm. Oh, you don't like kids? Oh, you can't have kids, right? Like, it's nobody's business. It's nobody's business. And now I can see why people, now and as you we're know talking what? this That's out. That's a good point, because as a mother, I find sometimes I'm a little hesitant, not to admit it, because I'm very proud of being a mother. Yeah. But there's that line, mm-hmm. family, family that, that life's at home, this is work. And when I'm at work, right. I am a different person. So I find that when I say that I'm a mother... Sometimes, again, there's that judgment of, oh, well, how reliable is she? Or yeah, where, where right. is she really, yeah. does she want to be here? Does she, like That pull of, mm-hmm. and that perception of, because I have a family, is it going to take me away from my job? And is it, it going to affect yeah. my job? And it may never rear its no, ugly head, no. but it gets in your head and you exactly. think about it. I don't want to be seen as that here or have right. that come into play here yeah. because this is my job this is where i work and that's why i tell everybody i'm a father of two kids and i can't stand them that's, that's, what, I say. that's what i say oh we can count on him <laughs> he'll be here all the time he doesn't want to be at home 
What else we got going on? That's about it. Tomorrow, on Throwback <laughs> Thursday. So it's Billy Joel this week. He turned 73. Yes. So our throwback uh, for tomorrow is uh, T Marks. You may be right. Jody Hunt is a listener. Cheater. Cheater. You have stacked the deck against me this week. It's taken me a while to figure out how to win this thing. <laughs> and now that I did, I'm. Call up listeners. Get listeners on your side. Get listeners to get their friends to go on our socials and vote. That's what I figured out. Mm. I'm, I'm just increasing the voter I thought pool. thought we knew that, and that's why we announced it and, and talked it up and tried well, to sell maybe. it every week. Jody Hunt is the equivalent of the radio <laughs> lawn sign. That's what she Very is much, for the election. Yes. And She'll go around yeah. and get all of her friends to vote for you, maybe right, because that's her favorite song. And she loves Billy out. Joel. Yeah, as soon as fan, we decided fan. on this because of his birthday this week, both of us said, Jody Hunt, because yeah. every time we play Billy Joel, we hear from her. Yeah. She sends us a little note and says how much she enjoys it. So she did help you this week. Out at uh, Canadian Tire and Trenton is where mm-hmm. she works. So if you know Jody, say hi. It was fun having her on the air this morning. Yeah, it was. But it doesn't mean you have to vote for me. But vote, for goodness sakes. <laughs> we didn't start the fire for Team Charity. is great off of the Stormfront album and back to Glass Houses from 1980. One of my favorite albums of all time. Yeah. That one. And he was running through his top five songs. He was asked on Stephen Colbert, what are your five favorite songs? And number five was Vienna. Okay. Off of, uh, and then, uh, and so it was, I believe it was one of the other ones. You May Be Right was number three. For the life of me, I can't remember number two, but it was, again, what he called it, a deep album cut. And number one was Scenes from an Italian Restaurant. Wow. Which is his opener of encores at all of his concerts. These are favorites he enjoys playing or just overall favorites? Just, great, just great songs answer. he just I, loves. I don't know the answer okay. to that. He says often in concert what he'll do is he'll say to the crowd, do you want to hear Vienna or just the way you are? Like, I'll do one of those right oh. now. And he says, more times than not, it's Vienna. Really? Because just the know. way you are is a yeah. great song, too. But maybe it's overplayed to some people or I don't I know the answer. Well, and I'm I'm surprised only because it was one of his biggest hits. Uh, Piano Man wasn't thrown in there because I think it is a fan favorite. And yeah. even driving in this morning, I heard it and I had that moment of, oh, I should have went with Piano Man. <laughs> even though I love We Didn't Start the Fire. Yeah. Um, he just has so many. Yeah. Like he such made a, it, but he a made large the point. catalog He made of the point of saying, I love my deeper album cuts. Mm. And I get that because hits make you a lot of money. Yeah. And so if you put an album out and you have two major hits and everything else stinks, how good a songwriter are you? But when you buy a Billy Joel album, like every song is great. They might not be single great, but off Glass Houses, the song All for Lena is one of my favorite songs. Stiletto off of 52nd Street, uh, Rosalita's Eyes. Like these songs, yes, Honesty was a hit. Big Shot was a hit. My Life was a hit off that album. But the whole, that's just what's so great. about. So to hear him say, yeah, I'm proud of all the songs I wrote. Awesome. And he hasn't put out a pop album in 25 years. You doesn't know that? need to. Like 1996 and 97? How well do you think it would be received, though, now? And I know I it's know. Billy Joel. Yeah, probably not. But yeah. it, it he has, as you said, so many great songs. And I'm not saying he's not still creative and he can't still put great songs out, but you love those songs so much. That's right. what you want to hear. When you go to see Billy Joel... That's what you want to hear. You want to hear those songs live. Still be so relevant yeah. without having put anything out exactly. in 25 years and still be instant when you hear I would have said longer, yeah. to be honest. He, I think it says 96, still touring, 97. Oh, but yeah, yeah, to, put oh new, yeah, to put a new album out, yeah. I've seen a set list, song after song after mm-hmm. song. Yeah, it's ridiculous. Exactly. So, so good. So uh, get your votes in on our socials. Uh, talk to Jody about that. And <laughs> winning songs coming up tomorrow after the 8 o'clock news. Have a great McHappy Day, everybody. It's the Mark and Charity Coffee Podcast up by 11 o'clock wherever you get your favorite podcast. Join us tomorrow morning right here on 95.5 Hits FM. We'll talk to you then.